Hello everyone. Let's look into an example where we have been given a generated clock properties and we have to derive a waveform out of it. So this is a regular practice that is being done in industry. We have this constraints. There is something called as constraints. So the constraints are being given. So in those constraints, you will be having the generated clock definition and its properties. And usually it it becomes a it it becomes a task to create a waveform out of the properties of the generated clock so let's try to do that over here it's very simple so for example this is one of the tables of the generated clocks and these are the values that has been given to given to us so for example the name of the generated clock is being given as gen underscore clock the source name or the source port name or the pin name is being the master clock and the edge is given as 246 and and the rest are and the rest are dash rest are uh, uh, the, the, there are no values for the remaining ones. So out of these three information, how can we derive a generated clock? It's very simple. So we know what does the edge means. We know what does the name and what does the source mean and the master master pin and port name means. We know all this. So let's try to bring up over here. So for example, we have this master clock with this particular waveform and the edge numbers are being written over here. This is the first edge. This is the second edge. This is the third edge and so on okay so the, we have this edge numbers now what the table says is the first the first rising edge of the generated clock arrives at uh, arrives at the second edge of this of the master clock okay so, so it says that the first rising edge of the generated clock arrives at the second clock edge second edge of the master clock so let's draw that so your generated clock the first rising edge arrives at the second clock edge of the master clock or the source clock the next what it says is your first falling edge of the generated clock arrives at the fourth fourth clock edge of the or the fourth edge of the source clock okay so let's draw that the next falling edge will fall something will come something like this over here okay next it says that the next rising edge or the second rising edge of the generated clock comes at the sixth edge of your master clock comes at the sixth edge of your source clock so this is yeah and that's it this is the waveform that we have okay so out of the gen generated clock properties or out of the generated clock definition that we already have we already might have in the constraints we can always derive a waveform out of it and this waveform can be further used for analysis so if you look at this waveform this is a this is a, the, the the frequency of this particular waveform is half of that of the master clock so it's basically divided by two circuit itself the only change is there is a phase shift of 90 degree over here Okay, you see there is a phase shift. There is a phase shift over here with respect to master clock, and this and, and to define this phase shift, there is no option that is being given to us that is being given to the user. That's why the edge is a very good option to you to define this kind of waveforms. Okay, so moving on, let's look into another example where we have been given an inverted option as well. So the inverted switch is on. Okay, so we have all these definitions and along with this definition we have the inverted switch as turned on. So in this case how will the waveform look? It's pretty simple. So initially you draw the waveform without inverted and then you just invert the waveform. So for example in this case we have done half of the job. Okay, half of the job is basically creating a waveform with the first three options and now we have to just invert it. So the waveform, the generated uh, clock waveform, let's call it dash and the waveform with an inverted option will look something like this so this is how your waveform final waveform will be will be looking like so for example this was what was given to you so this waveform will never come into picture it will be directly this waveform which will be used for your analysis okay so this will be an intermediate waveform and this is your final waveform which with the current options being set over here so this is what we have for for the uh, for the inverted clock uh, inverted clock definition it's again a divided by two inverted clock with a phase shift so all this kind of irregularities on the waveform can be modeled with the help of by by switching by turning on and off the generated clock properties that's all always available with this okay so and this is the continuation of this of the same waveform that's what we have okay and there is one more way to represent this kind of waveform so for example we have we have been given or for example we have been given this kind of waveform and now we have to derive the generated clock properties out of it there is a different way to do it and we already know about that 
it's that we have the edge option which has been given to us so how does the edge option works over here if you look into the edge option it says the rise the first rise edge the first fall edge and the second rise edge so if we give a proper options over here even the inverted option but might not be even required so let's look how, let's look into it how do we do this so for example now in this kind of waveform we have to see where the first rising edge, edge comes so starting from this clock edge if you move this is the fall edge this is the first rising rising edge that comes for this generated clock dash okay so we will say that the first rising edge for the gen clock arrives at the fourth clock edge so let's put 4 over here we'll put we'll put 4 over here the first fall edge comes at the sixth edge of the source clock and the second rising edge comes at the eighth edge of the source clock so the options over here will comes at 4 6 and 8 so it's it clearly specifies that the first rising edge of the generated clock comes at the fourth fourth edge of the source clock the fourth edge could be a rise or a fall doesn't matter it is just of it is just an edge number so okay second the the first falling edge comes on the sixth edge of the source clock and the la and the and the uh, last falling the, the the second rise edge comes at the eight edge of the source clock. So this is how you define four six eight over here, and you and you don't even need this inverted option. You can just put a plan. You just put a dash over here. Okay. So this is always possible with the with an uh, with an edge thing with the edge being being the property of the clock uh, gender clock properties. That, that this all these features are always possible. So next, what we have to look is. Even there, there are pro, the, even though we have the edge edge uh, option which has been given over here, there are cases where even the edge option is not sufficient for us. In that case, what do we do? So what we'll do is there is there is some uh, before that before getting into that that problem statement, let's derive some generic clock. Okay. So for example, we have been we have been given this master clock. Okay, and in addition to the master clock uh, edges, we have the time period as well. We have been given that this is zero nanosecond, this is two nanosecond, this comes at four nanosecond, six, eight, and ten nanoseconds rep respectively. So it says that your first edge, your first edge of the master clock, arrives at zero nanosecond. Your second edge of the master clock arrives at two nanosecond. Your third edge of the master clock arrives at four nanosecond, and so on. This is what it represents. Okay, now. The, now if you see over here the period the period of the clock of the master clock is 0 to 4 nanosecond because this is the one that forms one complete cycle so 0 to 4 nanoseconds is the is the clock period of this particular master clock okay now if you have a waveform something if there is there is a circuit that creates a waveform which is something like this in that case how would you fill up your generator clock properties because if you see over here your you can you can always have the first rising edge which is exactly at the first edge you can have your last, second rising edge which is also exactly at the fifth edge but what about this particular edge which is neither on the second nor on the third it lies somewhere intermediate let's say on 3 nanosecond so in that case how do we how do we solve this kind of uh, waveform problem or how do we interpret how do we code this kind of this kind of generator clock properties so what we'll do is since this will take a, a bit of a bit of explanation we'll we'll stop over here and we'll try to code this kind of waveform in the next video thank you